This week on Jared Scott Outdoors, we're heading out bear hunting for our second try this spring. We've got a lot of bears hitting the baits, so it should be good. Stay tuned. Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors, your source in the field for local outdoor news. This week on Jared Scott Outdoors, we're back out bear hunting. Two weeks ago, you saw that my son and I started the bear hunt. With two baits out, one had been hit real hard while the other was just getting going. Luke and I didn't have any luck on the first try, but more bears were showing up and I was excited about our prospects. This is Cody Pierce and his son Caden and Devin. And uh, we actually went elk hunting with Caden and, and Cody a couple of years ago. How was the elk hunt, guys? I thought it was way fun. It was one of the hardest <laughs> things I've ever done. But uh, it was awesome, amazing. However, no you, didn't, luck. you didn't see it because we hardly saw an elk. No. So didn't. it didn't work out. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's try a bear hunt down the road when it works out. And so that's what happened here. Caden's going to take off to Africa here shortly for a couple years and so we want to do something fun with him and his younger brother is tagging along as well and I'm going to show him what you know a, a hunt where we actually see some animals so let's get after it well with Cody and his two boys excited to see some bears and hopefully find a shooter we headed on in with high hopes with two hunters the plan was to get Cody and his oldest son Caden set up on this first bait that had that big boar hitting it last week while his younger son Devin and I sat the other bait. We're heading up to that bait that was hit so hard last week. I'm expecting there won't be any bait, so we've got 100 more pounds of food, but kind of excited to see what happens. Hopefully we can get one of these guys on a bear. Just like other times, as we got close to the bait, we were very careful and kept a close eye out. This particular spot is hard to see into because of so many trees and branches in the way. There was one dark spot that looked a little fishy, but it just didn't look right. Then suddenly I saw motion within it. I immediately assumed it was a bear. Right is it that black spot? Yeah. I didn't think it was one because it didn't look right. And then as I started moving, it moved. Letting them know, we quickly got Kane's pack off and he pulled out his bow. We're just going to have to inch our way in and see what we can do. We still had a lot of work to do to sneak in to get him within shooting range. As we inched closer, I kept looking and things just didn't look right. Then suddenly a couple chipmunks showed up running across that dark spot. That's when I realized what I thought was a bear wasn't. As they say, I jumped the gun. We then kept sneaking in just in case, but in the end, didn't see anything. Other than chipmunks. All right, I feel silly because I made him think there was a bear. I thought there was one, but it was a chipmunk moving around in a dark spot. The barrel's been hit, rolled over, it's probably totally empty. We'll get it fixed up and see what happens. As we guessed, the barrel had been cleaned out. We quickly loaded the barrel with all the food we brought in, swapped out the trail camera SD cards, and got Cody set up in the blind with Caden. Then Devin and I hurried out of there. It would take us an hour to hike out, drive to the next spot, and then hike into the bait we'd be hunting. We carefully slipped in and didn't see any bears or chipmunks. However, checking out this barrel, it had been cleaned out as well. That meant there'd been a lot more activity here since the last time Luke and I were up. That also meant that both places had good potential. So now this one's been hit hard. Last week it just had that one little bear, but it's been cleaned out. So, I don't know if that means nothing's coming because there's no food anymore or what, but we'll add some and hang out, see what's going on. Before we hurried into the blind, we pulled the SD cards out of the trail cameras here as well. So once out of sight, while Devin kept an eye out, 
I started looking through the photos at both places to see what kind of bears we had. So looking at the bear activity over where Cody and Caden were, there was no surprise that the sow with the three cubs had been there a lot. They really liked to come late in the evening just before dark and then they'd spend lots of time there at night. Sure enough, the following late evening, they were there again. These were definitely the bears that were eating the majority of the food here. However, another bear did show up. It was another black one and appeared to become a regular. It wasn't a really big one, but not real small either. Just a younger bear that was more than happy to get a free meal or two, or three. In fact, this bear had been there earlier the same day that we showed up to hunt. The real big cinnamon colored bear that had been there the week before hadn't returned since then. And that was really a discouragement, as it was the one we really hoped would be around. So overall, aside from the sow and three cubs, all we had was the one black bear that was legal to hunt. Now let's see what was hitting the bait Devin and I were at. Again, it was cleaned out, so we knew there would be a lot of activity. The first bear at the bait was the same one we'd seen on camera the week before. It was an average bear, not real big, but very pretty. It made several appearances. The videos that caught my attention the most from it was when it was walking around stomping his feet. This is something I've never seen before. If I'm correct, this is a way for male bears to leave a scent trail and attract females. If that is indeed what it's trying to do, I don't think it was able to benefit from it as it was later outclassed big time. And you'll see what I mean. So the next night a sow did show up, but it had a couple cubs with it, and they didn't come very often. For the most part, they were nocturnal. It was the next day and a different bear that appeared that really got my attention. This black colored boar was huge, easily a six foot bear. Now bears can be tough to judge their size without something as a reference. This is when the barrel really comes in handy. It's easy to tell that this big guy had some size. So the smaller but pretty cinnamon boar now had some serious competition. In fact, I don't think it stood a chance when it came down to it. The thing with this big black bear that was very promising was that once it came in, it came in every day. And it came in every day during shooting light. That's a rare thing, especially with these bigger boars. They seem to go nocturnal usually. Well, as you can imagine, with so many bears, this barrel wasn't going to stay filled long, and sure enough it didn't. I have quite a few videos of this big black bear trying to pull the barrel down. By the time we showed up, it was barely hanging on and needed some repair work done. The day we did show up to hunt, the big black one had been there that morning. So if the trend continued, he'd be back, if not tonight, tomorrow. Well, Devin and I sat the blind excited about the prospects and wondered how it was going for Cody and Caden. Switching over to Cody and Caden, it wasn't long after we left that a bear suddenly showed up. When we were driving up there to hunt, I tried to explain how to judge a younger bear from a big one. Well, when this one came in, they were suddenly faced with that decision. Was this a shooter bear or not? It wasn't a big one, but was it big enough? I've sat and watched lots of bears that at first didn't look that big, but as I filmed it and watched it through the viewfinder, they just looked bigger. And so you sit there and second guess yourself over and over on whether or not they're a shooter or not. It seems to really be a mind game. Well, Cody and Caden decided this was probably on the small side, and since it was still just the first evening of the hunt, they would go ahead and pass. With their hearts pumping just a bit faster, they watched this bear for about six minutes before it suddenly got a whiff of something it didn't like. As quickly as it came in, it left, and they were now left with the question of whether they'd made the right choice. So what do you think? That's crazy. First bear, you know? Yeah. Kind of a smaller one, not a shooter. No, that's pretty small. Something. Still pretty awesome to see that close. Yeah. Hopefully we can get another one in. Meanwhile, over at our blind, Devin and I didn't ever see a thing. So at dark, we headed out and met up with Cody and Caden back at camp. 
After looking at the photos together that night, we decided to swap which bait we were sitting at the next day. So at first light, we found ourselves sneaking in once again. The sticks Cody had put on the barrel last night were still there, so nothing had been there overnight. We slipped into the blind and just waited, and waited, and waited. We could only hope that Cody and Caden were having better luck than us. Finally, after several hours, we had to stand up and stretch our legs. So Devin has found out why sitting in a blind bear hunting feels like an eternity. <laughs> when there's nothing going on. It's now about noon and nothing's gone on. So there's been a lot of sleeping <laughs> we, going on, but that helped because we didn't get a lot of sleep last night. So we're just standing outside here. Bates up there just stretching our legs, taking a little bit of a break. Hopefully, uh, Cody and Caden have been having a little bit better luck than us. But anyhow, we're just hanging out. I mean, it's a cool experience and stuff, but waiting makes you tired and then you fall asleep. It's the bear. <laughs> Other than seeing chipmunks and birds, we didn't see any activity at the barrel. Devin and I both did our best to find things to do to keep the boredom from driving us crazy. All right, it is now about five o'clock. And it has still seemed like an eternity. I've, we're taking, we've taken turns napping. I've gone through my phone photos, deleting things that I didn't need till I'm bored out of my mind. We have, uh, hopefully now we're in the last part of the evening where things should get good. So we're crossing our fingers that this has been worth it. Right, Devin? Yeah. <laughs> As each hour slowly ticked by and we moved from evening to late evening, I was sure some bears would make a visit. But to that, I was disappointed. We ended the night without any bears showing up. When we met up with Cody and Caden, it turned out they had a day just like ours. Not a thing. Devin and I made it back from the bait that we were at, and as you saw, nothing happened. Devin, what do you think of today? Um, kind of sad, nothing happened. <laughs> we saw a bunch of bear on like the cameras we set up, but there was none when we went, so it was a little... Got them all excited for what we were gonna see, and then yeah. nothing came in, so... It, it was surprising to me. I really thought we'd have some action, but uh, that's just kind of how it goes. So hopefully, hopefully the other guys had a little more luck, but we'll just kind of hang out, make dinner and wait for them. Well, the next day was very similar to what we had just experienced. And by the middle of the day, we had to call it quits and head on out. We did return again about five days later. The Pierce boys didn't want to give up just yet. So we gave it one last try. The timing of this next trip landed us right in the middle of a late snowstorm. So we came up last night in the middle of the night. It's kind of crazy to come up in the middle of the night to check bear baits and put bear on or bait on the sites. We, we've, I think we actually pushed some bears off one, um, but we've got snow as you can see, which is kind of crazy this time of year. I've never had this. Um, we're we're now a week into June, and it's getting snow right now. But anyways, we are heading in. And hopefully, hopefully this time, things will happen. Didn't work out so well last time, so let's cross our fingers. I'll tell you what, this was not at all what I was expecting to be hunting in in June. But it's what we had, so we just had to roll with it. Getting to the bait, we slipped in and waited. We froze, and then we waited some more. And just like these late snowstorms usually do, the snow melted off. In fact, would you believe that this view from the blind turned to this view by late morning? It's crazy how our winter landscape turned into spring in a matter of hours. But then again, this is Idaho. And just like Idaho, the snow came back. So now our spring turned winter turned spring turned back into winter. Not only was it a lousy day for not seeing bears, but the weather sure didn't help. The other bait, Cody and Caden did briefly see a couple bears, but instead of coming all the way in, they skirted the barrel and slipped out just about as quickly as they had come. Other than that, no luck either. 
this morning was a bus for both of us. We, we you know, we're, we're separated in two different groups and we went in and neither one of the baits had even been hit overnight. Just nothing happened. And so that's a wrap. The elk kind of a couple years ago, we saw nothing. And so I showed him what it's like, what it can be like, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Caden? You saw some bears, right? Yeah, got to see some, so successful that way, but unfortunately didn't get Did one. your heart get yeah. racing though? Yeah, yeah, it, there's a couple times we started being <laughs> so, pretty fast. <laughs> so, so they at least saw a few bears, didn't work out. Devin and I, man, we just, the spot we were at, we just couldn't seem to have anything happen. And so we just did a lot of blind sitting. But anyways, that's hunting for you. Tune in next week at the same time for another episode of Jared's Cut Outdoors.